Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the MTAR Technologies Limited Q1 FI23 Earnings Conference Call hosted by Orient Capital. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star 10 zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Irfan Rain from Orient Capital. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, thank you, Ranju. Uh, good morning, everyone. Myself, Irfan Rain from Orient Capital. We are an investor relation advisor to the company. I hope that all of you and your families are safe and healthy. On behalf of MTAR Technologies Limited, I extend a warm welcome to all participants on Q1 FI23 earnings con call discussion. Uh, today on the call, I am joined by Mr. Srinivas Reddy, sir, Managing Director and Promoter, Mr. Guneshwar Rao, sir, Chief Financial Officer, and Ms. Shreelika Jatsi, Manager, Strategy and Operation. I hope everyone had an opportunity to go through our investor deck and press list that we have uploaded yesterday on exchanges and on company's website. I would like to give a short disclaimer before we start the call. Uh, this call may contain some of the forward-looking statements which are completely based on our belief, opinion, and expectation. As of today, these statements are not guarantee of our future performance and involve unforeseen risk and uncertainties. With this, I hand over the call to Shinivas, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Irfan, and uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. Uh, today on the call, I'm joined by Mr. Guneshwar Rao, who is Chief Financial Officer, and uh, Ms. Sileka Jasti, uh, Senior Manager, Strategy and Operations, and Oren Capital, our Investor Relations Partners. Uh, we have uploaded our updated investor deck, press release and results, highlights on the stock exchanges and company website. I hope everybody had an opportunity to go through the same. In Q1 FI23, we have posted a revenue of rupees uh, 91 crores with an EBITDA of 25 crores. Uh, further, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are right on track in terms of our revenue guidance growth for this uh, FI23, uh, which is around 55 to 60% growth is what we're looking at. And we'll continue to maintain by end of the year, the EBITDA margins of 30% plus minus 100 basis points. Uh, this is what I have mentioned very clearly, and we are right on track with that. Uh, further, yeah. let me give you a brief overview on uh, the business outlook further. Uh, to begin with, uh, we are doing extremely uh, excited, actually, I would say, the work uh, in terms of uh, the clean energy, the way it is progressing. Uh, especially uh, also with our new capabilities uh, that we have established uh, near the airport and uh, the new plants. Uh, the operations of sheet metal have commenced. The exports also have commenced. Uh, in, uh, and we have achieved uh, more than 8.37 crores uh, as a starter to begin with. And it will progress uh, even more further. Uh, we are expecting, uh, looking at our order book, uh, we have uh, an order book closure of about 765 crores. Uh, which is very encouraging as well. And the good news is that uh, we are expecting close to about 600 crores worth of orders flowing in in this quarter itself. Uh, so uh, the prospects of uh, moving forward with consistent growth levels, even for the future years, uh, is very evident right now. Uh, further to this, uh, if you look at the nuclear, uh, we are receiving the orders for the uh, fleet reactors, uh, one of the orders is supposed to come in the last quarter is coming in this quarter for the tenders have been raised. And uh, we're also looking at uh, the space uh, division uh, releasing uh, further orders to us based on various launch programs that they have right now. And uh, the most important initiative the company has taken in terms of the space program is that we have uh, approached uh, uh, we have decided, the board has also agreed upon it, to develop a small satellite launch vehicle. And uh, we are working towards that. And hopefully in this quarter, we'll be able to take this forward with ISRO and uh, in space uh, to develop a launch vehicle which constitutes 80% of the world market. And that's a huge leap in terms of what MKR is capable of. 
and MTR has all the facilities to actually build this launch vehicle, which we have been doing most of the work for ISRO in the past. Uh, further to this, uh, the products division uh, is really uh, progressing very well. Our aim is to develop a very big product portfolio. Uh, we have been qualified for roller scoots. We have completed the first articles, and now we are in the verge of converting it into a complete 100% import substitute, uh, whereby most of the defense and space programs would uh, stop importing this product moving forward as well. Uh, obviously, the electromechanical actuators, uh, we are in advanced stage as well. Uh, we'll be executing all the initial orders given by the department uh, in this current financial year itself. We are moving on to, obviously, semi is another major uh, achievement that we'll be closing out this year uh, for the higher payload for the uh, issue. And we are also looking at various other products, uh, like the ASP SMBs, which will constitute a huge uh, revenue base for the company as a product for the clean energy segment. And we're also looking at bellows, which will save, will give us a lot of uh, cost savings uh, in terms of manufacturing in-house, which we were importing earlier. We are right on track with that as well. And we're also looking at various other products in clean energy segment, uh, and also in uh, in areas of uh, nuclear space and defense, and certain products that we are working on, purely based on import substitutes. So with this, uh, I would hand over the call to uh, our Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Puneshwara, to take this further. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Srinivasadi. Uh, good morning, everyone, and warm welcome to our earnings call today. Uh, I will take you through the financial and operational highlights, uh, post which uh, we will open the floor for the question and answers. Uh, so our revenue from operation uh, uh, stood at 91 crores in Q1 FI23 as against to 54 crores in Q1 FI22, uh, which translates to 68.4% increase on year-on-year -year basis. And uh, we posted an EBITDA of 25 crores in this quarter FI23 as compared to 14.5 crores in Q1 FI22. Uh, which is 72.5% increase over year-on-year -year basis. And the profit before tax also is higher, uh, which is uh, which stands at 22.2 crore in Q1 FI23, as against 12.6 crores in Q1 FI22. Uh, this is 77% increase on year-on-year -year basis. And uh, also profit after tax uh, now at 16.2 crore in Q1 FI23, as against 8.7 crore in Q1 uh, FI22, uh, which is 86.2% increase on year-on-year -year basis. Uh, so our diluted EPS also stands at 5.3 per Q1 FI23, as against 2.8 per Q1 FI22. So when compared to on QOQ basis, so, uh, the revenue and gross profit is lower by single digit only, uh, uh, as Mr. Srinivas already reiterated, uh, we are actually the 55 to 60% guidance revenue growth and EBITDA margins we will continue uh, by year and by end of this financial year. And our order books also, we have a strong order book as on 30th June 2022, which is around 765.6 crore. So we have taken a lot of improvement initiatives in working capital reduction days and all. Our working, our operating cash flows also paused to 16.2 crore in Q1 FI23 as against to uh, negative 6.9 crore in Q1 FI22. Uh, working capital days has reduced to 249 days in Q1 FI23 uh, from 275 days in Q4 FI22. Uh, due to various steps we have taken uh, in the reduction of working capital. As mentioned by our uh, MD, we are taking several initiatives to develop a new products across the different sectors, and we are strengthening our technical and corporate teams to cater to the high growth of the company, which is set to witness in the coming year. So with this, I, I open the floor for discussion. Thank you. 
We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on a touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question comes from the line of Deepak Krishnan from Macquarie. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Just probably one maybe bookkeeping question. What are the number of uh, hot boxes and overall, you know, you marquee local boxes done this quarter? Uh, I think we have done about uh, around 725 is, kind of Yuma boxes. This, yeah, 726 boxes in this quarter. And uh, I think Kilako, we have done 10 numbers. That's what we have done this quarter. Sure, sir. And just probably from a growth guidance, I think while we've done very well in the clean energy segment, both on revenue and as well as order book, maybe some of the other segments, the growth was relatively slightly softer. So if I look at your overall guidance of about 55% for the year, how do you kind of look at it between clean energy and other segments? And you know what would be the key drivers for these other segments to pick up in the coming months? See, if you look at nuclear, we're working on some long cycle projects, which the deliveries will happen starting from Q2 onwards, uh, going right up to Q4. So the kind of, uh, like we're working on projects like Fuel Mission Head and the other projects which will start uh, delivering uh, from quarter two onwards. And obviously the space program itself, uh, we are in advanced stage of delivering the semi cryo engine, the first to the product in uh, Q4. Uh, which is a major kind of an achievement which we've been working for quite a number of years, and that's what a new product that we're launching. So the other segments are also on track in terms of uh, the deliverables that uh, we envisage, and that's why we are pretty much confident about the 55 to 60 percent growth of revenues that we're looking at. Uh, if you come to clean energy, uh, it's really uh, we are right on track in terms of. Uh, trying to capture the kind of demand that uh, we are envisaging, not only for this year, for next year. Our expansion plans, uh, uh, the bottleneck areas uh, are being plugged in uh, to take care of the future growth requirements as well. Sure, so just probably one other question from my end. You've indicated about 600 crores of orders in the coming quarter. Could you just broadly give us a range across segments? What are the drivers for that? See, the main driver uh, for that is uh, we're expecting close to about 500 crores of orders, uh, which uh, the number which I have said is more or less uh, in the pipeline uh, for sure. Uh, these 500 crores are concerning with respect to the Yuma units for Q3 and Q4 for next year. And then we have the Kilako units coming in, uh, which is about uh, the Yuma units for about 175 crores. And there has been... Uh, correction in the Q1, Q2 uh, purchase orders uh, with an upscale of about 14, 15 crores there. We're looking at about 190 crores. And then we're looking at Kilapo at about 240 crores of orders being received. And another very important thing is the product which we have developed called the ASP for the fueling system. And that we are expecting an order's worth of about 90 crores as a, purely as a product to be delivered for them, for the customer. Uh, these are the various areas, and also for the electrolyzers, uh, they have planned to give us about 200 numbers uh, to begin with. So all these orders are expected in this quarter. Uh, that constitutes about 500 crores, and uh, with the existing order book of 765, we're looking at that number. And the rest of the 100 crores is going to flow in from nuclear defense and space. Uh, that's that's the breakup of the entire 600 crores, what I can see right now. Sure, sir. Just probably one final question from my end. Just on the space program, wanted to understand in terms of CAPEX requirement for the new initiative that you've indicated and like where are we in terms of development because you've indicated that the semi cryogenic engine would be de de you know, delivered in Q4 itself. See, the space, uh, if you're talking about the launch vehicle. Uh, yeah, launch vehicle, uh, yes. Yeah. So we have started our work on the designs of it. We have submitted our proposal to in space uh, and also to ISRO, and uh, uh, that's where we are right now. And the design uh, phase has already started in the company. And uh, the we don't need any additional capex for this. More or less, everything uh, entire has in-house, which we have been working with ISRO for about 35, 40 years right now. 
So there will not be any additional capex requirement for this for now, uh, at least for the first three launch vehicles. Uh, so that's the plan. Uh, so mostly, in all probability, if everything goes well, uh, we should be able to, uh, you know, hopefully sign the MOU in this quarter itself. And that's uh, that's something which uh, is very very exciting for all of us. And uh, uh, that we're really looking forward for this because it's a very exciting challenge that we want to take up, but not at the cost of adding too much of capex for this, since we have all those capabilities in our bag of now. Sure. Generally, what would be the typical order size for the launch vehicle that MTAR would cater to? See, it's too premature to say that right now, uh, because you see, the way it goes is that once we develop, see, we are trying to develop uh, the engines for that, and once we do that, the launch vehicle itself. The support comes in from the avionics and the rest of the things. Obviously, the PMO office has clearly said to support the private industry in terms of that at cost basis. So that's where we stand. So uh, the numbers are yet to be rolled out. But right now, we are in the design stage. But uh, it would be a substantial increase uh, of revenues from the space program uh, once we're able to successfully launch uh, or release this launch vehicle uh, once it's done. Uh, sure, sir. Thanks for the uh, detailed answers. I'll just get back to the question. Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Sandeep Tulsian from GM Financials. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good morning. Uh, sir. First question is on the overall order inflow guidance. I think uh, in the past call we had guided, we'll get somewhere about uh, 800 to 850 crores of inflows. And with say five pro plus execution, what you are targeting for the current year, you'll close with somewhere close to 950, close to 1000 crore order book at the year end. Uh, but in the recent call, you are now uh, increasing the guidance because you're saying in addition to 200 pro inflow, what you want in one queue, 600 pro is what you expect in two queue itself. Uh, so, from a full year perspective, just wanted to know where your new guidance will be uh, from an order inflow perspective, or will it still remain in this range for the rest of the year? Uh, as of now, Sandeep, uh, the orders, as I said, uh, we're expecting about 600 crores flowing in this uh, quarter two itself. And uh, we really have to have more clarity in terms of the second half of the year. But when I say 1,000 crores is a closing order book, we are doing substantial uh, revenues for this uh, year as well. So we are talking about the net order book closure of 1,000 crores. That might go up, but I would like to still uh, keep it at 1,000 crores for now. Uh, Based on the progress by end of quarter two, then I would be able to give you uh, more clarity on where we would stand. But there will not be any downside to this for sure. Understood. Uh, second question was on your walking capital uh, improvement. I think the company took a stance last year that uh, with increasing raw material prices, uncertainty of supply chain, uh, you had stocked up a lot of inventory. And you know uh, both these scenarios seem to be easing out now. Uh, so, from a sustainable level, you come down from say 275 days to 250. Uh, what should be a sustainable? Should we look at 200 days going forward, or is it too ambitious? Or should we even look further? If you can guide us where you are headed to by end of this year, from the net working capital cycle uh, perspective. See, if I ignore the external factors for a minute, then we are looking at slightly below 200 itself. Our our focus is to. Uh, reduce it below 200 level itself. The only issue is it all depends on the external factors as well. Uh, they are becoming very dynamic uh, from time to time, but uh, internally, as far as we are concerned as a team, we are working towards uh, reducing uh, the number of working capital days. Our target is definitely slightly below 200, and let's hope that by end of this year, we'll be able to achieve that. Understood. I uh, the third uh, question was on Bloom Energy's uh, yearly outlook. I think they have guided for a very strong second half uh, of this calendar year, 30-70 you know, kind of a ratio first half to second half. And when I look at your quarterly volumes, you just mentioned uh, 726 and 10, roughly 736 units you've done, which is uh, broadly 250 units kind of a monthly run rate. Uh, and based on the annual guidance that you gave, uh, your uh, monthly uh, run rate needs to be stepped up to something like 350 units plus, I mean, between 350 to 400. Uh, so uh, just want to understand from a uh, capacity perspective, are we geared up to deliver these kind of volumes uh, on a 
monthly basis or will you need additional investments uh, do you still hold on to that guidance if you can just give some more color uh, how these numbers will pa uh, will pan out on the uh, sofc unit uh, side please see the sofc units uh, if you look at uh, our q2 for this quarter for example we are looking at 1000 plus units uh, going out now the capacities beyond so basically our capacities are getting in place which i have explained earlier which are expanding up to an annual uh, requirement of 9000 units in all the products and that's getting ready by uh, mostly by september october so that's where we are looking at so basically the volumes will be much higher in the next two quarters for sure in this calendar year and uh, whatever numbers we supposed to deliver to bloom uh, will be adhered to and uh, in spite of uh, whatever anyone says there are still issues of supply chain but uh, we are able to uh, take care of that issue as well based on our inventory levels so we are pretty much confident to achieve uh, those uh, deliverables over the next two quarters order and one last question from my side is on the nuclear energy segment uh, of course we were l1 on some orders uh, by, by march and and uh, i think they haven't been booked looking at the order book numbers that you reported uh, which you guided will be booked in 2q uh, but from an execution perspective uh, it is very chunky in some of the quarters uh, so we have hardly done some 3 and a half crore of uh, revenue in first quarter so from a full year perspective how do you see this number panning out because that's the area where you need maximum ramp up to meet your guidance or do you still think you can do 80 90 crores kind of an annual run, uh, top line here or uh, are we looking at uh, a very high number uh, of 90 crores and it should be trimmed lower if you can guide how this revenue build up should happen in the nuclear segment please yeah, well, it's not about trimming lower, Sandeep. It's very clear we're working on some long cycle projects which are going to, the dispatches are going to start from Q2 onwards, like fueling machine head and cooling channel assemblies and all that. So all that is happening in the next three quarters. So we'll be right up there in terms of uh, the planned dispatches in a couple of units that we are manufacturing with nuclear products. And uh, that's right on track with us. And uh, so... Uh, that will be done as per uh, quarter wise we'll be able to uh, adhere to that schedule what we have mentioned earlier so there should not be an issue with that so what revenue should we expect uh, in this segment for full year uh, roughly around 85 80 to 90 crores is what we are looking at so let's see because we're working on the fueling machine head the dispatches are going to start from this quarter to next quarters and also on the current channel SMBs and all of them so we're looking at uh, that's a good number in what we are looking at compared to the previous year. So that's how the progress is going to happen. Got it. All right, sir. Thank you so much and all the best. Thank you, Sandeep. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Renu Baid from IFL Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks and good morning, sir. Um, uh, congratulations for good results. Um, I have three questions. Uh, first, if you look at the Bloom Energy portfolio, now that um, Kilaco Electrolyzers plus ASP, which is a new product for which we are working, uh, it has started to stack up, plus um, there would be sheet metal and some electronics um, also where we are getting in. So if you look at our addressable market with Bloom, um, so on a per unit basis, if one has to compare, um, how has the addressable market for us improved in terms of the percentage share of the cost of the hot box or the modules? Uh, if you can give some insight in terms of, you know, how have we, we been able to increase the wallet share with the customer? Uh, first thing is, uh, if you look at the enclosures, we got qualified for enclosures as well. Uh, Mm -hmm. this quarter and uh, now we are going to start the deliverables on we have received 700 numbers of uh, enclosures uh, ordered by Bloom so we'll start those deliverables starting from this quarter to next quarter and that's uh, the additional wallet share that we're looking at uh, so moving forward for next calendar year uh, which I've mm -hmm. uh, not included in my order book inflow or the additional wallet share that we're looking at we are looking mm -hmm. at almost 2,000 plus numbers of enclosures going forward as well. And apart from this, we are working on a lot of uh, uh, sheet metal assemblies for Bloom, which is going to US and to South Korea as well. 
and mm. we are we qualified for 67 of such assemblies uh, which we have done and uh, this is something uh, uh, so what ultimately is going to happen is the hot box will go into the enclosure with all this uh, sms uh, sheet metal assemblies and uh, moving forward the electronic side the integration is what we are looking at fully integrated system and that's the plan in uh, as far as uh, probably the electronic would take a little bit more time but uh, that's the that's the goal in which we want to move and logistically also it makes a lot of sense for bloom to get a uh, full system uh, in terms of savings and logistics cost as well and ha everything happening under one roof. So that's the goal in what we are moving ahead with. Right. So basically in terms of the number of modules uh, which you were um, catering to or addressing within the hot box, um, if you can just help us to um, highlight which are the different modules that we're today working on or already uh, supplying to uh, BE. The first is the Yuma boxes is what we are supplying. Uh, yeah. Then we have uh, the Kilako is another product that we are working on, which we are going to supply, which is get, getting wrapped up next calendar year with our 1,600 numbers. Hmm. And then uh, we have the uh, electrolyzers, which uh, now we, we are going to deliver 60 numbers uh, uh, in the coming uh, quarters. And then we move on to about, initially they said they will place an order for 200 numbers more for next year. But that's mm -hmm. just the initial uh, order. But we're looking right. at a real ramp up in electrolyzers happening the subsequent year in a big way. Uh, right. Because the demand for Yuma and Kilako is going up in a big way. And then electrolyzers will ramp up from FI uh, probably subsequent year. Apart mm -hmm. from this, we have the ASPs, which I said, which is going to be a 90, around 90 to 100 crores of business coming in just by the product itself. So as I said, our product portfolio is going to really uh, improve a lot based on our innovations that we are doing right now. And then the electrolyzers, uh, sorry, the uh, enclosures, what I've said, uh, it's almost uh, like about 12 to $15 million worth of enclosures that we are going to uh, get an opportunity for next uh, calendar year, apart from the 700 what we are doing right now. And uh, the SM, assemblies, if you look at it, uh, it's almost like about uh, 10 to $15 million worth of uh, uh, sheet metal assemblies that we're working on, which will happen next year as well. So there's a large kind of increase in terms of wallet share and in terms of uh, the innovations, what we are doing for Bloom. Uh, if you look at the bellows, if you look at the ASPs, and now we are working on the heaters for the electrolyzers, which... Right now, they are importing from U.S. Uh, uh, we have started our work on developing these heaters as well for them and the ceramic assemblies as well. So it's a continuous innovative process to make sure that uh, there are a lot of cost savings, uh, uh, even for MTAR as well. So that's where we stand right now. Right. right. Um, so aligned with this, as our uh, value added and localization um, for various components and products increase for um, the footprint that we're doing for Bloom, uh, how should we look at the impact on margins? Because currently the portfolio broadly uh, tends to be dilutive at the gross margin level, though operating leverage kicks in. But with uh, these new products coming in where the valuation is higher, um, how should we read on the impact of gross margins and EBITDA margins um, in, say, financial 24-25? as the value of these businesses in our revenue mix uh, continues to increase? So the important thing is uh, whatever savings uh, we are looking at in terms of cost savings, in terms of, I'll give you a simple example in terms of bellows. Mm -hmm. uh, the, we already started manufacturing our own bellows instead of importing from US, but we mm -hmm. are maintaining our price uh, uh, as per the market prices are concerned. Now, the right. savings in Bellows itself for next year would be close to about 18 crores or so. Mm -hmm. So, But we are, uh, we are giving it to Bloom at a price which is very reasonable for them. In spite of that, uh, the value add we are looking at is close to that number. So mm -hmm. similarly with the other products like ASPs, so ultimately what's going to happen is we are going to actually, uh, overall we're going to reduce our cost by about 3 to 3% 3 to 5%. Uh, mm -hmm. in terms of these innovations. And that would definitely improve further our margins moving forward as well. Sure. 
Uh, secondly, um, now if you look at the nuclear part of the business, uh, while the new order inflows related to free fleet reactors have been a bit more uh, bumpy, if you look at some of the peers like Larson, they have been reporting um, quite a few large set of uh, projects and orders from NPCIL. So apart from the two orders where we were L1 in terms of the fuel handling systems in the last quarter, um, how should we look at uh, the pipeline of the fleet uh, projects and uh, what in your view would be the order inflows uh, coming in the next 18 months from um, NPCI related to these fleet tenders? Uh, frankly, Reno, like we have been L1 in March itself for one of the projects. Mm -hmm. We received an order for one uh, one project. The other project uh, we, are, we are hoping to receive last quarter, but they're saying now we'll receive in this quarter. Mm -hmm. Now we are receiving uh, tenders from NPCIL on a regular basis. We are quoting for them. And uh, basically our, our execution cycle for NPCIL, we have enough orders on hand to execute and our growth plan uh, we have taken such orders which are realistic in picture. Uh, so overall, most of the fleet reactor orders, uh, the tender should get floated over the, in three different phases. Right now, the phase one is on, and then we move on to phase two and phase three. And this is a program which will go on for the next uh, close to 10 years, actually, because there are 14 such reactors. So earlier, we used to have a bumpy cycle, but now with this kind of program, we'll have consistent uniform kind of a growth happening in nuclear year on year basis because we are building up our order book uh, in the nuclear segment based on the three reactors what are on the annual right now. Okay. So on an average 200 crores plus of order info from the nuclear segment should be uh, sustainable in the next couple of years? Uh, comfortably, I would say that. Sure. And uh, lastly, um, we did see a, a good improvement in terms of the networking capital cycle to 249 days. Uh, if you can give some um, elaborate um, uh, details or insights in terms of what steps have we taken to reduce this uh, networking capital cycle and going forward, uh, what could be the incremental uh, reduction that we're targeting in the next 12-18 uh, months um, on these? Uh, JR, you want to answer that? <coughs> yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. So we are actually uh, we, we are improving the uh, credit period from the vendors. From uh, earlier it was using because of the COVID reasons there were a lot of vendors we were paying advances. Now mm -hmm. we are actually targeting 60, 60 days credit period from the vendors. That is mm -hmm. one. And second thing is daily monitoring of our receivables. Weekly monitoring of receivables are in place. And uh, also we are trying to reduce our inventory levels. Uh, so that is also we are monitoring on day-to-day -day basis. And uh, definitely with the higher revenue growth, and uh, we are looking for around 200, uh, less than 200 days uh, uh, by end of this financial year. That is our target as, an, as of now. Sure. And uh, any progress in terms of the bill discounting options that you were exploring for export customers? Uh, actually, there are two kinds of bill discounting, and the recourse and non-recourse bill discounting are there. Today, we have a bill discounting uh, limits are there with the customer, but the uh, thing is, it will not go off uh, my balance sheet. It will still stay in a balance sheet. Mm -hmm. Only in the case of non-recourse only we will get. Uh, so non-recourse in India, many of the Indian banks are not doing this non-recourse uh, receivable purchase program. So that we are actually trying to do with the, some foreign banks, we are trying to talk to them. Uh, maybe we will uh, succeed in that. We'll let us see what uh, what will happen in the coming quarters. Right. Um, thanks much sir, for your inputs um, and all the best. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Dipesh Agarwal from UTI AMC. Please go ahead. Yeah, well, good morning, sir. Congratulations for a good set of numbers. So my first question is, are the 500 crore order from a clean energy segment, which you are saying, is it executable over next uh, six months? Uh, the final call which I said will come in this quarter, right? So this is with, uh, in relation to the next calendar year. Uh, okay. Okay. So okay. We already received an order for 175 crores earlier, which you have seen. And this is addition to that. So all this is executable in one calendar year, from January to December of next calendar year. 
Understood. Understood. Uh, sir, it's happening to see new customers again added. Can you talk about some of the large projects you are working with new customer and what is the revenue expectations from the new customer in next say two to three years? See, we are working progressively with uh, which is a great. We are doing a lot of first articles. So, uh, the white team is also coming this month uh, to discuss uh, a long-term relationship with Entar. Uh, similarly, GE Renewable has started discussions with us, and we're expecting orders flowing in from them. All this is under the clean energy segment in the hydro projects, under the fabrication uh, plant what we have in uh, Adi Butler, and uh, even uh, GK in Aerospace. Uh, we, so all so we are being very cautious in adding these customers uh, in terms of uh, looking at the kind of volumes that we can generate with them, because a lot of effort goes into first articles. So whatever customers we are adding uh, are uh, supposed to be very, uh, you know, excellent customers in terms of uh, their standing in the international market, and we'll continue to work with them, and the volumes will get built up over the next one year or so, and that's where we are right now. Okay. Uh, uh, sir, on actuators and the roller screws, uh, the understanding was uh, it is 80 to 100 crore opportunity each. Uh, so, can you help us understand how long or what would be the gestation period in substituting the imports? Uh, can it happen in next two years or would it be more gradual? See, roller screws are concerned. Uh, it's uh, something, uh, uh, you know, reality. Uh, for the last 40, 50 years, uh, 40 years or so, we have been importing it from Galway, Sweden. Now, for the first time in the, history, in, in the country, we have developed it. We took us two years to develop those roller screws. And we have also have our first articles ready, what uh, the uh, DRDO labs have given us. And uh, today we are in a situation where it's only a nod from the government to ban the imports and go ahead with them time. It can happen in a month or it can happen in two, two, three months max. So that's where we stand and that uh, I would really appreciate my entire team to actually achieve this. And uh, that, that's why I said the product portfolio of MTR is going to really improve in terms of roller screws, ASP, SMVs, ball screws, uh, the electromechanical actuators as well. So over the next uh, two years, you would find a uh, very good basket of these products generating enough revenues with good margins for entire moving forward. Okay, okay. And so, lastly, if I can squeeze one more, uh, what is the incremental capex for us for next two years, given that our new plant is already ready? Uh, it won't be that much because we've already established all the facilities. Some of them are getting established, mostly by September, and even the new plant fabrication commissioning should also be ready September and October. And it can be a few bottleneck areas here and there. Other than that, I don't see uh, much of a capex. But we are moving into the electronics uh, division as well, as I've mentioned. So we might see some capex coming in from there, which is very... We want to make Eptar a fully integrated company. That's our goal in the next one, one and a half, two years. Uh, so that's the area which we are looking at right now. And that's a new capability which we want to add. Uh, and uh, that's uh, very exciting for us as well. Understood. Yeah. Thanks a lot, sir. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Srinivas Ayer from Rockford Consultancy. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning. Uh, uh, recently, India launched SSLV a uh, few days back, and it was not successful. Uh, looking at that, do you see uh, we will get uh, opportunity of uh, our own launch vehicle. Yeah, see, uh, ISRO has developed uh, the SSLV. Uh, uh, it was a project which they have developed, which is actually 80% of the market. Uh, the technology of that is completely different from what we are developing. We are developing with liquid engines. They are going with solid motor uh, systems. So it's a completely different design, uh, having four stages, and we have just two stages in our design program. Uh, so it's the first of the launch. Uh, so probably the second launch, what they're going to plan, they have three launches planned for this year. Uh, hopefully the second launch should go okay for them. But there's no competition as such. Uh, so uh, ultimately, 
uh, will uh, uh, hand over hand over a lot of private companies who are capable of doing it in the long run. So we have to first design and develop our own launch vehicle, which we are right on top of it. Once we do that, then we'll take it forward and uh, work with InSpace, uh, which they'll collaborate in terms of even uh, uh, in terms of uh, the uh, working together in terms of avionics and everything and launch pad. And uh, that's how it will progress. So that's something which we are really looking forward to moving forward. Okay. My second question is, in the last conference call, you did the margin, maintaining EBITDA margin around 30%. Uh, but uh, in the first quarter, it has come down uh, to 27%. So can you explain what are all the factors responsible for that? There is no specific factors for that. See, basically, if you look at our quarter-wise numbers, see, we always give guidance over the year. And uh, basically, we'll catch up on the margins of 2-3% here and there moving forward in the coming quarters. Also, in terms of higher, much higher revenues, the kind of guidance we have given of 55 to 60%, obviously, uh, the margins as well will improve and we'll end up with about 30% with plus minus 100 basis points. There should not be an issue with that. Okay. Thank you very much. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Sandeep Tulsian from GM Financials. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. So I had a follow-up question. Uh, some of these uh, items which you mentioned, uh, which are for import substitution in hot boxes, uh, the ASPs uh, uh, and the ceramics and also the bellows which you've done in the past, I just want to understand the orders for this is part of the Yuma or, elect or the Kiloco hotbox order that you get. These are not over and above, right? The 90 crore number that you mentioned. No, the ASPs are over and above, right? Okay. Uh, ceramic assemblies and bellows are part of the hotbox configuration. But what happens there is that we, uh, we are doing a lot of value add there, so our costs come down a lot. Uh, in terms of what we can, uh, in terms of margin improvements, that's what's going to happen. Okay. So that's where it stands. So that's how it is. Okay. So I just wanted to understand this a little bit better. So when we are supplying the hot box, it is it was X of ASP, but included the bellows and ceramics which we were buying out. But now we'll yeah, do right. bellows and ceramics in house. And ASP was not part of it. We'll get added over and above this and. Uh, so is the case with enclosures. That's right, Sandeep. That's it. Okay, sure. And just on CAPEX, so, so you did elaborate on what you will uh, be spending, but if you could just give us uh, a numerical number as to how much you will spend will, uh, in terms of rupees crore for this year and next year. No, we have already said that, Sandeep. Like for the uh, hot box division, uh, the kind of volumes we have, uh, we have already put capex in place, which is getting implemented now for about 40 to 45 crores, right? So then the Adi Butler plant will get commissioned by September, October, and that's the capex plan much earlier itself. Uh, other than this, uh, the only capex that we can see moving forward is on the electronics uh, division that we want to start uh, separately. Uh, plus a few bottleneck areas, depending on the kind of progress we make on various products or various requirements. So I don't see much of a requirement uh, moving forward, at least for the next one, one and a half years. But it all depends on the kind of uh, demand uh, which is going up day by day and how it works out. But we have enough capacity to handle such things. So that's where we stand. So what should we look at, say, anywhere between thought? 40 to 50 crores a year, or can it be higher going forward on an annual basis? No, uh, it would be less than that, around 35 to 40 crores a year. Okay. All right, sir. Thank you for clarifying the points. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Yash Jain from Nivishai. Please go ahead. Hello. Good morning, sir. Congratulations on a very good set of numbers. My question is related to the team. To hear you. Can you be a little louder, please? Hello, am I audible? Yeah, please go ahead. 
सर माय क्वेश्चन इज रिलेटेड विद क्लीन एनर्जी सेगमेंट कैन यू प्लीज गाइड अस अबाउट द गवर्नमेंट पॉलिसीज टुवर्ड्स द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ हाइड्रोजन इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर the government has already announced uh, some kind of a subsidy programs for this some budgets have been announced uh, but i always keep saying that uh, ultimately the technology development is what is most important uh, in terms of green hydrogen the electrolyzers the technology which has to be viable and uh, that's where we stand right now so ultimately we are we have to start somewhere to end where we have to do today uh the climate change is a serious issue even in uh we must have read articles all over the world in us europe everywhere so there's a lot of serious intent towards this and uh, in fact uh, uh if you have read uh, the news uh, the senate of us uh, has uh, passed a bill for uh, i think about 390 billion dollars towards clean energy uh, development uh so these are all very encouraging factors because that's where we need to move uh so we would see a lot of such support system happening from the governments various governments and uh, technology will evolve over the next 4 5 years and that's where uh that's the advantage in uh, where we are because already we are in advanced stage uh, with our customers to develop these products and uh, that's we'll have a, a a very uh, substantial vertical being built uh, for the electrolyzer itself moving forward in the next one year okay sir thank you so my next question is also related to clean energy segment uh, can you sir uh, please guide us about the uh, demand scenario for electrolyzers in india and uh, our order book and uh, our order position for the electrolyzer i have mentioned this earlier yes uh, see we are doing prototypes right now the batch production is going on for this year for 60 numbers they are trying to place orders for about 200 more numbers for next year but that number can go up uh, as the progress is made during the current year and then the subsequent year you can really see a big ramp up in electrolyzers so that's where we stand right now and that particular vertical is going to be a parallel vertical with what we are doing in yuma and kilapo units at this point of time okay sir uh, next question is related with uh, space segment sir uh, sir can you please update on the isro plan for the next 2 3 years or uh, the involvement of private sector in the space mission policies see the government of india wants it so to be more on the r&d side and provide support to the private industry to privatize uh, the various launch vehicles moving forward but it's a process uh, that they want to follow so uh, for us as far as we are concerned uh, we are not looking at pslv or gslv uh, which are way too complicated in terms of uh, handling those systems but what we are eyeing is the small satellite launch vehicles where 80% of the market is supposed to be for that and that's where we are working on right now okay sir thank you sir and all the best for the future thank you thank you before we take the next question a reminder to all the participants that please restrict yourself to two questions the next question comes from the line of utkarsh maheshwari from reliance general insurance company limited please go ahead hello sir good morning hello. morning sir uh, can could you just uh, give me elaborate on what kind of uh, category building we are working on this electronics control system i mean what are capabilities we are targeting and what should be our addressable markets in that category and what should be the timelines we should be working out and what kind of capex we intend to incur to begin with we are looking at various options we are looking at cable harnesses pcbs box builds uh, like electro uh, like ems facility uh, which is very much required a lot of our existing customers are looking forward for it including bloom as well and various other organizations which they are looking for we might move into uh, radar business as well moving forward so we have to see how it goes mostly our focus is on clean energy uh in terms of the electronics uh, box builds uh so this is something which we are looking forward for 
And the CAPEX is not that much. Probably we're looking at a budget of about 30, 35 crores to establish this. And uh, we already started taking in the uh, uh, right kind of team to build the electronic team over the next uh, three to six months uh, to address uh, this new uh, capability that we want to add, which would make MTR a fully integrated company in all aspects. As it is today, we are, uh, for most of all the customers, we are uh, like a uh, one-stop show under one single roof. You know, they have all the facilities to address their requirements. And with this electronics, it would take the company to uh, becoming a fully integrated company. We are doing fully integrated systems as well right now. So we have a substantial knowledge on that, which we are adding further uh, very good team members to build this business moving forward. So is it it's fair to assume that the majority of the electronics for a will be like complementing your existing product line and will be like more towards uh, putting a back integrated model on that? Yeah, it was existing uh, requirements of various customers and also for the new customers as well. So it will be a combination of both. And for the radar, I mean, what could be the thinking behind that and what should be the time frame where we can start looking something more uh, curiously into the segment? See, we are also working on the mechanical side of the radars. Uh, uh, it's not that we are not doing that. But hmm. what we would like to see is more uh, progressively doing more in clean energy segment for fully integrated systems and also for the other systems that we are looking at. And we'll have more uh, information on this by end of this quarter uh, in the direction we want to move. And uh, that's where we want to take this forward. Fair point. So actually, I missed out our involvement in SSLV. I mean, what all areas we'll be covering as a uh, project? Would I have to understand that? No, we are going to cover the entire uh, uh, manufacturing of the launch vehicle itself, right? Okay. So the, the support system from ISRO is going to be on the avionics, the launch pad and all that, which government has already announced will be done at cost basis to promote the private industries. The biggest achievement is to build a launch vehicle. So that's, we have all the uh, equipment and capability to do that. And uh, right now we are working on the designs for it and we move forward as and when. Uh, we finalize the designs and then we start uh, manufacturing it. So this will this will not entail any fresh capex for us. No, not required because the testing, everything, all the facilities are provided by ISRO, uh, including uh, the uh, launch. Uh, at the time of the launch, also they'll support us with all the avionics and everything. So it's the existing uh, facilities. What we have in MTR is good enough to manufacture this. Okay, and I, I mean we already have a good base of mind people in in the category who are working already in that segment right so we don't have a problem of getting more people also to work on this absolutely yes thanks a lot sir thank you thank you next question comes from the line of deepak Kristen from mcquery please go ahead uh, thank you sir for the follow-up opportunity just probably one question just from a sourcing perspective are we seeing any benefit because of the stagon related issues because one of our key competitors from Bloom is there? And also, secondly, just Bloom yesterday on its earnings call indicated that the Inflation Reduction Act, which is basically to help decarbonization, they would get extra incentives if they source from the U.S. So any impact of either of the two on your order book or how do you kind of look at both these new slow items? What are the first question, Deepak? Can you repeat that? Yeah, just any impact from this uh, Taiwan-related issues in terms of you gaining market share near term because of uh, there being more supply chain issues over there? Yeah, see, uh, I can't comment on the China-Taiwan issue right now. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, basically, if things go serious there, then probably MTAR will get uh, the entire, uh, probably the share of, business what we are doing right now as it is we have a majority share but uh, we have to see that i don't uh, uh, pray for that frankly uh, we would like all of us would like to have peace in every area so let's see what happens but uh, as of now uh, the only dependability for bloom is with a company called kaveri in, in taiwan uh, for the hot boxes which they have a minority share as of today but uh, 
we're all geared up to address the bloom issue in case they have issues there so so that might happen or might not happen it's something which is very external deeper nothing to do with us so let's see what happens and secondly yeah you are absolutely right with the new senate what you said uh, which i mentioned earlier also that will give a big boost for bloom in terms of the support system in us and uh, that would that's something which is uh, encouraging actually even for us so that's where we are sure so any any just in terms of addition of customers to other technology acts of sosc any thought process on adding pem based customers or other customers in clean energy essentially focus on fuel cell see uh, if you realistically look at it uh, you know i have been doing my own research on this and if you look at a uh, platform for example or you look at you know there are different technologies but if you look at realistically the volumes they are looking at as of today it is probably far far less than what uh, where bloom is right now so as and when they are ready in terms of uh, outsourcing it making mtas or oem we are open to it uh, but that only time can say that uh, Sure, sure. So, thank you for the opportunity. Those are my questions. Yeah. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Shreya Malhotra from Yashvi Securities. Please go ahead. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Uh, so, sir, I just wanted to know, in with respect to the work you do with Bloom Energy, so do we have any exclusive uh supply agreement with bloom energy and uh my other question would be other than bloom energy what who are the more other customers that we have in this with the same product line uh in clean energy so we don't have any exclusivity with any customer for that matter so mtr doesn't work like that so we don't have any exclusivity but If you look at our customer base, we work like partners. It's not like a buyer and seller relationship. I keep saying that because a lot of technology is involved there. And as far as the other customers are concerned, I just mentioned that about the kind of volumes that other customers are looking at. You know, if they are ready to outsource it, they are still developing it. So uh, you look at you know companies like Black Power or even uh, any other companies for that matter, which we have. looking at it so whenever they are ready mtr has the platform to address their issues so it's more like uh seeing how well they can develop their own product and how they can outsource it at this point okay and sir would uh, like would it be uh, the uh, product that we are supplying to bloom energy would it be similar to that product or would are we developing something new for our customers in with uh, in collaboration with them so everyone has their own technology you know if you look at plug power it's a pem technology polymer electromembrane technology bloom is an sofc technology so each one has their own kind of technologies bloom is a leader in what they are doing right now so but we'll be able to address the requirements because we have the base capabilities to address any of these technologies that's not the issue okay sir thank you that is all from my end thank you thank you thank you the next question comes from the line of neeraj runthla from mega profit consulting please go ahead good morning i had a question on the new lines that may be set up by zoom once india gains uh, the uh, outlook on the national hydrogen mission so uh, what is mtar's plan to set up new production lines in india with respect to uh, the huge demand that may come up so as i said earlier see when we are saying uh, the new line we are all geared up for that whenever it happens it might take a year or a couple of years i guess but uh, as i mentioned earlier we have increased our wallet share to an extent and moving into fully integrated systems uh, that's the first step for the establishing a full fledged line so as and when it happens uh, we'll address that we'll be ahead of this we we are very proactive in addressing such issues so we'll uh, we'll get the uh, go ahead call from bloom to do that at the appropriate time so we'll definitely address that at that point 
uh, I also had a follow-up question. Um, it's about SSLV. So uh, what kind of um, um, business are we looking at with respect to value in terms of uh, MTAR achieving through SSLV only in the next two, three years? I don't have the numbers right now. We are in the design stage. But what I know as far as the commercials are concerned, the opportunities, it covers 80% of the world market being and India being the most economical in terms of these launches. India itself would have about 10 to 12 launches. And then you're looking at the launches for the other customers internationally. So that would be a, a big uh, step forward for MTAR as well in space sector. And that's why we are putting all our efforts in uh, working on the design and development of the launch vehicle. Thank you, sir. Um, thanks for the questions. Thank you. Due to time constraints, we have reached the end of question and answer session. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Srinivas Reddy for closing comments. So I would like to thank all of you for sparing your time to join us for this earnings call. And uh, as I always mentioned that uh, we're putting our best efforts in terms of innovation. And we strongly believe, and I continue to believe that innovation is the main uh, forte for MTA. And the rest all is just a byproduct of that. And which you are literally seeing in terms of what we are doing right now. And we'll continue to progress the way we are progressing in moving forward as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. On behalf of Orient Capital, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. <laughs>